Welcome to How's Your E-Presence on Business Radio X. This show was produced by ePresence, and I am Mark Galvin, the founder and CEO of that firm. We would normally be coming to you live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel, but today we are not. Nope, we are just like all of you. We are behind closed doors. We are stuck in our basements. We are in our attics. We're trying to figure out a place to create our own office space, and we're doing that today. So I'm actually coming to you from my basement, and Mike Salmon back there at Business Radio X will drop this on the third Thursday at three because that's the day that we always drop these shows. Now, you know this too. We always have, we always talk about business and social media. That's the goal about this today. So by being here today, my goal is to give you something new that, well, that you just haven't been able to apply before. Maybe something a little new that you just did not expect. We're gonna cover some news today. And the news, this is really cool. We're going to talk about some things that came out from the Better Business Bureau about the stimulus checks, because there's some scams that are coming out on social media. We wanna make sure you know about those so you can avoid them. And there's even other social media scams that I'll mention. Also, there's a new tidbit coming out. Instagram Live can be viewed from someplace new. So tune in, stay tuned in here, and we'll make sure we'll cover all those great things for you. I, as you know, we always like to bring on a guest here on How's Your E-Presence, and we have a great guest this month. Uh, my guest this month is Rachel Simon with Connect the Dots Digital. Rachel, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I love podcasts, and I love talking about all things social media and LinkedIn. I am so glad you're here. And Connect the Dots Digital is a, it, your company does somewhat similar to things to what we do at ePresence. What do you do at Connect the Dots Digital? Uh, so yeah, it's very similar in a lot of ways uh, to what you guys do. Um, we focus specifically on utilizing LinkedIn for professionals. So whether that be individuals or groups, helping them to ensure their uh, profile is fully optimized, uh, that they understand who's in their audience, and then they are developing content that's going to showcase them as experts and thought leaders in their industry to sort of build their entire profile in a meaningful way for business development or for whatever their various goals might be. Uh, and you know what? That is very similar to what we do here at ePresence. And you know, some of you gay, some of you folks might listening say, well, okay, Mark, why do you have Rachel on? Well, she and I decided to connect and it's always good to talk to other folks that are in your space because you just never know where that can take you. And so Rachel and I had, we had a great conversation. <laughs> there were so many, there was so many little pieces of info that we were, we were bouncing back and forth and we were excited about that. I told her it wasn't but 20 minutes into that call. I said, all right, you got to be on my podcast because there's so <laughs> much that you have that you know about Rachel you can help our audience so that's why we're here today um, you guys Rachel is awesome we're gonna share some great info about the work she does and we'll get into more about connect the dots um, I in fact I, I'm eventually gonna get back and ask you why you made that plunge because uh, I always like to hear that uh, when I decided to make the plunge into uh, starting e-presence it was you know, there was a, there was a strong and good reason for that. So we'd like, I'd like to get into that with you a little bit, but let's talk about the news if you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to learn about uh, news and what's going on is to ask questions. You know, and all of you know this, if you want to send a question to me, you can just my universal handle, and this is everywhere is E presence MG. And that's something you should do is have a universal handle, use the same handle everywhere. So that is on Twitter. That's on LinkedIn. That's on Facebook. You can find me Instagram, even E presence MG. So the question I have, the first question I have, it came from Mr. David Magnato. He is the revenue manager from the pyramid hotel group in uh, New York city. His question is this, why is the about section so important and what's the best way to present it to stand out? Now, we have a 30-minute show. I could spend 15 minutes answering this question, right, Rachel? Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, Rachel, what is, how, why is the about section so important? It's really your opportunity to tell your story um, and really showcase your personality and your point of view. So I think, and I, I would imagine you'll agree that this, the old style of that section used to be called summary was really a right. very formal, like 
almost like a CV, you know, Mr. Galvin has 20 years experience and blah, blah, blah. Now it's really, I am passionate about whatever you do because, you know, my goal is to help people make, live better lives or whatever. You can really tell your story. Um, and the other nice thing is for business owners is you can have it have a dual purpose where you can tell your story, but then also really talk about what your company does and bullet out some of the services that you offer with a call to action, obviously, at the end. So people know where to go and find you. Bravo. I have gone to t calling my or everybody's LinkedIn profile, their personal web page. Mm -hmm. because it really is that you do get your own URL. You can send people directly there. And if you built your own company, your own personal web page, you would have on there why you're passionate about what you do, why people should want to do business with you. And the about section is the best place to share that. The one thing that is, I think very important about the about section is you only see the top three lines. If mm -hmm. I'm just scrolling through, those top three lines are so, so important. You've really got to make sure that you ask the very most important questions or, or, or have a statement there that speaks directly to your audience. So A, who's your audience? Who do you speak to? So if you're looking for a job, the audience is the employing, you know, whoever's going to get you into the door at the new company. So the first three lines need to really speak to that person. So they go, oh, this is interesting. And then they open it to see more. So the about section is, frequently overlooked because it represents work because you've got to write something, but yeah. think about it very carefully. Yes. You've got to, you've got to spend some time on it, but definitely don't skip that section. Well, that's a great question, David. We could spend, honestly, we, maybe we will. We'll show on that. <laughs> yeah, that is, it is so important. So the next question we have comes from Marcel Arcele. He's the entrepreneur, enterprise business development manager, not even manager, just enterprise business developer with Republic Services. His question is, how can I get as many characters as you have in your headline on LinkedIn? So he's talking about that line that shows up just below your name. That's the headline. And, you know, normally LinkedIn's going to tell you to put your, your title and your company. Well, I have on, I have a lot of characters of mine in typically, and if you're doing this on your website or on the website, itself. It's 150 characters max. If you would like some extra characters, there's a bit of a hack here. You can go to your mobile app and you can add an extra hundred. It's actually somewhere around 90 extra characters, but you can get close to 250 characters. So that's how you do that. Just, but be warned just because you can get extra characters there doesn't mean you should because it can become a little too cumbersome, a little too uh, busy. So I would be careful there. Don't dig so deep that, uh, that you're just putting a bunch of characters up there, words that don't really support your mission. Well, those are two great questions. I'm always thrilled when I get these questions in. So folks, if you have one, feel free to submit it to me anywhere you want. Just remember E presence M G. All right, so Rachel, let's get into some news. Right. The first thing that we are gonna talk about is what the Better Business Bureau has said about um, being careful on social media. And I'm gonna read this quote. This is uh, from Tyler Russell, who's the marketing marketplace manager for the Better Business Bureau Northwest. He said, Tyler, I'm assuming Tyler's a he, doesn't say Mr. or Ms. It could be a Ms. for the record, but it says, but the, the quote is, most of these government agencies will not contact you through these social media venues. So be very wary of those unsolicited messages and don't pay any more money for a free government grant if you have to pay money if you have to pay money to pay for that free government grant, it's probably not really free. So there are just so many scams that are out there on social media. And I think a lot of you may have heard this, but it really comes down to this. Don't answer questions on social media that look like they're trying to pull data from you that could be confidential information. For example, if someone asks you or if there's a questionnaire or something that shows up on social media where they're asking you, what's your mother's middle name? Don't share that. We know that. <laughs> Rachel, how many credit cards do you have where they said, hey, for security, what's your mother's middle name? Right. right? Or Main name. Or I should the say, name right? of the first street that you lived on. <laughs> right. right. All those things. Don't answer those types of questions on social media. Yes, we love social media. We can do so many great things with that space. But be careful 
not to find that you run into a dead end and end up giving away confidential information where the next thing you know, your, your, uh, your identity has been compromised. There's one other thing I want to mention, and that is that Instagram is now allowing you to watch Instagram live videos um, on your desktop. So it was always on your phone. You could always catch those there. But Instagram live is now available through the web. And you can join and join in and watch these live videos right from your desktop. Now, here's why that's good. It's going to expand the demographics. Because I can tell you right now, my mother, who's in her 80s, is pretty good on technology. She's not going to use the phone to watch an Instagram live feed. But she will on her laptop because she's used to watching videos and movies such on her on her laptop. So I would think this will help extend the type of people, the number of people that you can reach. Rachel, do you have many clients that are trying to use Instagram or Instagram live? I really don't. Um, I think, you know, Instagram marketing is, um, I don't know, maybe I, in my perception is it's, it's used a lot for specific, like more brand B2C type. I think you're right. Businesses, and sure. I work primarily with B2B. Um, but, you know, the true Instagram uh, expert in my house is my 12 year old daughter. And so <laughs> I could defer to her uh, on all Instagram related questions because I, she makes fun of my lack of knowledge in that area. Um, that is pretty funny. Yeah. So my kids, I, I've got a 16 year old, a 21 year old, both girls. And then our oldest, uh, uh, a young man, he's 24 and they all understand they're all on Snapchat. So they yeah. use Snapchat all the time. Instagram is their second go-to never. Well, they are on Facebook a little bit, but, uh, but those are the two big ones with them. And I, and I have to go to my daughter when it comes to Snapchat and say, okay, I need some help on this. How I do I understand. do those little you know, how do I do those screen changes? You know, the, all that fun stuff. They have to walk me through that. But it really comes down to back to Instagram. It really comes down to knowing where your audience is. Yeah. Right. If your audience is there, then that makes good sense. I had a client come to me and say, I need to be on Instagram because I have three clients that are constantly pinging me, reaching out to me on Instagram. And I said, okay, great. Let us look through your, your contacts on Instagram and let's make sure that makes good sense. So we did a, an analysis and found out that of all of his major connections, and he gave us 20 people that were real important to him, only the three that he was talking about were on Instagram. The rest of them were on LinkedIn and inter interfacing with him on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out where is your audience and make sure you spend time there speaking to them. Instagram is, if you're in business and you have a B2C style product, then using video is a great way to reach folks. And I would really consider, if you are one of those folks, find someone who can help you put together great videos and put them on Instagram. And here's the thing, we're talking about Instagram live. So this is like this sort of thing, Rachel, running a live show. If you're going to do that, you could, and you have a, a real compelling product, it's a good idea to go ahead and turn on Instagram Live and access your, your, uh, your client or your customer base that way. Right. It's always good to test things out too. You never know what, what's going to resonate with people. So That's true. Oh, that's a good point. And you can create products that can go to mul multiple channels, right? Mm -hmm. You can certainly put something on, on LinkedIn that you can easily apply to, to Instagram or run a, a live video on Instagram and take that copy of it and move it over to, um, to LinkedIn. A lot of us, there's, you know, I'm not sure, Rachel, have you, have you seen the LinkedIn live shows on LinkedIn? Yep. This is, I, I asked for one, but there's so many people in social media that LinkedIn's only giving out a few of those seats. If you are a person in an industry where you don't have a lot of people in your industry that are dominating LinkedIn, you should ask for a LinkedIn live channel and then you can really connect to those people. Yeah. Uh, there are so many people that are getting these channels from industry groups that don't have a, it's, they're not really saturated on LinkedIn. So of course, LinkedIn is going to be more willing to give those folks those channels. Well, that's good stuff. Thank you for uh, being patient as I go through the news um, and your feedback was, was really great there. So Rachel, why did you start your company? <laughs> the million dollar question. Um, so I've been doing, um, I came from a nonprofit background. 
I worked in nonprofits here in Atlanta for 15 years Wow! and doing a lot of marketing there and decided to kind of go out on my own and do marketing freelance work. Um, and I was really lucky in that I fell into some great opportunities um, very soon after. And one of the projects that I was placed on, I was helping a CEO of a local um, healthcare, like small healthcare company um, with his LinkedIn presence. So he wanted to be connecting with wanted to sort of elevate his presence, but he really had a very small network to begin with. Okay. And so I started working with him on it to send connection requests out and post content for him. And it became this thing. It kind of took like on a life of its own where we really started seeing um, tremendous following for him. And, and um, new customers were resulted after about a year of doing it where they, um, they had some new clients and organically kind of built out this methodology right. and after a few years um you know you got to have a champion in your life and my husband was like you really should you got to really do this like all in you got to go all in on this linkedin stuff and so we uh decided to found connect the dots digital um about two and a half years ago and um and with the sole focus of sort of helping professionals take full advantage of LinkedIn. And here we are. That is really cool. Um, I'm guessing there's a little more flexibility with this, uh, this position, this role versus where you were before. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, it's great when you, you know, there's the pros and cons of working for yourself. Uh, so the pro is you make your own schedule and if you want to go to, you know, have an appointment in the middle of the day. You don't have to ask for time off. Uh, the con is that it's, all on you. <laughs> right. Right. It's a little bit of pressure. <laughs> sure. All the time. Um, but I love it. I would not have it any other way. Obviously, especially right now where we're all home, like working from home was my norm anyway. Now I just have more people in my office. So, <laughs> so do you have an office space that you typically do, yeah. focus on? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a we have everybody's home with us except for the we have two kids in college and and believe it or not they're still there one has a job wow. at one and the other well he has an apartment he's not actually on campus um so w there's three of us at home and so my uh, my high school daughter is in the dining room my wife is on the uh the third floor of the house up there with uh there's a mini office there and then i've always fortunately had my office in the very corner of the basement and it's uh it's worked out well but it's amazing the things that happen when you've got everybody at home. Um, yeah. 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 My daughter's bedroom is above the, my office and she likes to work out in the middle of the day. So yesterday <laughs> it was like elephants. I'm like, I all those distractions, yeah. but it's okay. Everybody's it, it's all, we're hanging in. <laughs> so, well, this is good. And, and your story and mine are, are, are very similar because uh, there is a need for people that don't have the time and don't have the desire to do this themselves and having an option for someone that can leverage that for them. And there's something else that you said I think is important. And that is it's a long-term play. So you are working on that LinkedIn profile for the gentleman at your, your past organization. And after a year, they started to see some new results from that. It does take time to build a profile where it starts to pay back. Okay. And there are ways that people can do this on their own. And so, we encourage you to look at this, but also there are professionals like Rachel, like ePresence that can help you with it if it's something that you just don't want to tackle yourself. But definitely, and I always say, dip your toe in the water and just start start off doing it. Just Agreed. a couple times a week and just start getting active and you'll be surprised at the result of that. So tell me this. you what, We always talk about questions that we can throw at you. Your first question is more like a statement, but I love this. What is great about LinkedIn for all professionals? So that question can go a lot of different different ways. So where do you think, which market segment or which, is there a vertical market of professionals that you think can get the biggest bang for their buck out of LinkedIn? And do you find that there's a specific market niche? I don't think so. I really feel like, you know, it's hard to, um, 
you know, everybody's LinkedIn news feed is going to kind of skew one way or the other, kind of based on your industry and who you're connected to Very and who true. You generally sure. interact with. So that's the content that LinkedIn will continue to feed you. Um, but I really think that it's more the process and the uh, methodology versus the industry. So I think any industry is applicable. Some may not be. I mean, I've seen people like in the um, like in the fitness industry. It may be a little tough depending on what part of the fitness industry you're in. Sure. Um, but I think that that the majority of industries where particularly where you're selling to other businesses, it's it. If you're not utilizing LinkedIn to its, you know, utmost degree, you're missing out on a great tool. Absolutely. So we often say that it's the very first impression that people get in business today. And it is a huge resource. And even folks, if you're out there, you're not using LinkedIn, you should pull up every, every time you meet someone, go to LinkedIn and learn a little bit about them because you can find out so many things. And, and I am now, I meet a lot of people through LinkedIn. So officially, Rachel, you and I haven't actually met face to face before. <laughs> and so we were able to get a feel for who we were through looking at LinkedIn and realizing, okay, there's, there's certainly, we, we saw overlap, but there's also the ability where it confirms that you were somebody that I wanted to talk to. So here we are establishing a relationship through primarily from LinkedIn. And who knows where this relationship can go. I do, you and I have talked about this. There, there are probably opportunities where you and I can work together, where there'll be a chance where I find someone that I don't have the perfect for solution uh, for them but you would be that perfect solution. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing that happens. I, I had a guy who reached out to me and he found me on LinkedIn as a, to be a podcast, a podcast guest. Great way to find folks like that for speakers. It's also another way to see what's your competition doing. And I love that. You can go in and see how is my competition representing themselves and is my competition outshining me on LinkedIn. And that could be a huge motivator. Find out what your competition is saying. And if they're looking really good on LinkedIn, then you might be missing the boat on something and we'll need to get your profile cleaned up. So when someone comes to see you, they, they pick up the phone and say, hey, we need some help. <laughs> what do you do? Kind of give us an idea what your process looks like. So generally, I'm taking will, notes, by the way, oh, okay. <laughs> pending. Um, generally, I will uh, review their profile and then and I've actually just done this. I have uh, two, two companies that I'm helping um, their like leadership teams rewrite their profiles. And so we I'll kind of go through and make my recommendations. You know, you need to update your photos, you need a header photo, your headline doesn't explain what your company does. I'll put that together. We'll have a call. I'll talk through it with them. Um, and then for the about section, which you, we talked about at the beginning of the show, I will put questions together for them to answer because I think the best way for me to write that is when I have wording that is in their voice. Yeah, that's so great. my entire, um, you know, the, the main, I think, uh, mission of what I do is that it has to be authentic. And so no, and I, I would imagine that that's the same value in your company right. is you can't manage someone's pro. I can't manage 10 people's profiles and have them sound like me 10 right. times. Right. So. Why is auth why is being authentic important? Well, it's the same as if the, I like to think of LinkedIn as like if you're at a dinner party and you meet somebody, Right. You, you want to get to know somebody, you have small talk, you, you sort of ask questions, you get, you get to know them on a basic level, and then you decide if there is a potential to go deeper. True. It's the same thing, except on the digital space. So that's why when, and I'm sure everyone who's listening gets these messages, when you get, when you connect with someone and then they immediately like send you a salesy message, you know, you wouldn't go up to someone you just met and be like, hi, I'm Rachel. Would you like to buy, you know, my product? <laughs> That's right. You have to build a relationship. And so right. you build that by being authentically who you are. Um, 
showing value, you know, um, providing good information and good just content for your audience. And then they start to sort of see you as a trusted contact. And that's why that authenticity is so important. So in social media today, authenticity is said a lot. Yes. <laughs> and, and the reason that that words come up is because, well, there was a lot of unauthentic material being served onto, onto social media and not, and not just LinkedIn, but anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it is what you're sharing is that it's better to be yourself on LinkedIn and ultimately it helps build relationships. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a nice, the, why, the reason why I think LinkedIn is great for a number of reasons and it's the social media platform that I like prefer far above and beyond is that it has the combination of showing your personality like you would on Facebook or Twitter. Right. But people tend to be on a little bit of a better behavior on LinkedIn. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, because it's professional. And right. so you can, you can be funny and you can be a little sarcastic or show who you are, but uh, the, some of the uglier sides of social media don't tend to play themselves out on LinkedIn. Um, and people are generally there to help and support one another. I find it to be, for the most part, a very friendly platform. Right. Um, which is nice. That is good. <laughs> so the struggle that I think a lot of professionals have, is they're a little more guarded. I don't want to, and I get this a lot. I don't want to be the center of attention. So I don't want to, I don't want to build up my profile. And I'm sure you've heard the same thing. What do you say to those folks? Um, I think, well, the other thing I hear to, to piggyback on that is that sure. they don't want to sound stupid. Oh, oof, like, that's good. I don't want to, I don't want, what if I post something and people think I, I look uh -huh. you know, dumb? Um, people, everybody is out there trying to, you know, put, build this persona for themselves. Right. And, and again, there are definitely people who are uncomfortable sort of putting themselves out there, mm -hmm. but you can do it in small bites. So, you know, maybe there was, um, you found an interesting article that relates to uh, your industry and you just, just share it with a little context of what it is that you found to be interesting. You didn't write the article, but you're just, maybe my audience would find this to be interesting. Right. You start to, and you, you said it before, you start to test the waters and it's a little intoxicating when people start responding. Right. And then it encourages you like, oh, maybe, maybe I should be posting more content about this or maybe people are interested in talking about this topic. Um, you know, it, it's that 80-20 rule applies to where it really should be more about your audience versus you and what you sell. <laughs> that is the, that is exactly the ratio that I share. It is 80, 20, 80% 80 needs to be about your audience. 20% can be about your product or something you do. Exactly. So we are at, uh, and we said this before the show started, we're at 27 minutes, actually yeah, 15, 28. Yeah. It's <laughs> flown by. So uh, Rachel, share with everyone how they can find you. Um, so you can find me online, connect the dots dot digital or connect the dots digital.com. They both go to the same website. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, Rachel Simon, and you should recognize my profile picture with curly red hair. Um, Very good I, branding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm on Facebook. I have a, my, my company has a page on Facebook and Twitter as well, but LinkedIn is really the best place to find me. That's, That's really I'm the sweet spot. That's the center lane, right? Frequently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, Rachel, thanks for being here. And when, when all this is over, we definitely need to get together for a cup of coffee. For sure. You up for that? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you for having me. You bet. So for all of you, for the rest of you, I want to share something that's really important. Uh, here during the COVID-19 crisis, so many of you thought, gosh, I need to improve my LinkedIn profile, but you never had time before. Well, you might have a little time now. So why don't you do this? Think about joining me for a one hour LinkedIn webinar. I'm gonna talk about the five key parts of your LinkedIn profile that'll get you to that all-star rating on LinkedIn. And yes, LinkedIn has a rating level where you can reach that all-star level. It'll help you show up in more search results. You'll be able to influence your connections, do business with you or hire you. So maybe these are some things that you can look at. 
So we only do 10 spots per class and the price is $37.50, just $37.50. And we've, we've cut that, it's normally 75, it's half price because of where we are today. And here's the deal, I'm guaranteeing it. If you don't find that 37.50 an hour worth of your, it was it worth your time, I've kind of screwed that up. If you didn't find it was worth your time, I'm gonna refund you the 37.50 and I'm gonna give you $10. So I'm gonna pay you $10 for spending that hour with me if you don't think it's worth your time. If you wanna join us, you can find this valuable training at epresence.me slash webinar. That's epresence.me slash webinar. Why epresence.me? Because it's all about you. That's you for Mike. I'm glad uh, Mike Salmon always gives me a hard time for saying that. All right, folks, you know what we do at ePresence. If you need help on your social media these days, um, it's, it's hard to find marketing dollars. We certainly understand that, but keep us in mind. We'd love to help you out with all the things that you need to do on your LinkedIn profile. Get it cleaned up, get you active. We can help you with all of that. And you can find us at epresence.me. So that's the show for Rachel Simon. I am Mark Galvin, and this has been How's Your ePresence on Business Radio X.